What's up everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Drill Dozer. I of course am What the Fnu and in the last episode we took on the Skolar Factory. In particular we took a after the Skolar Hideout. But before we continue into the Skolar Factory, we're going to take a little bit of a detour. We're going to go over to the Red Dozer's training course and there's a couple reasons for this. Number one, they're going to be introducing you to a lot of new mechanics they're going to be dealing with in the future here, and this is sort of my way of getting them out without having to give the characters voices and listen to the tutorials and all of that jazz. Like they're going to say here, this place feels familiar, doesn't it? If you played here back when you were just a baby, this place is packed with strange gadgets, so it's a great place to practice. Come back here anytime you want to brush up on your skills. Also come back here anytime you have an ability to break these blocks right here. There's some good down there, but unfortunately we can't get to it yet. You know what I love about this place? It gives you the gears right off the bat. There's an upside and downside to that. Upside is you get to the fun part of the stage very, very early. You don't have to work into it. And already we're getting introduced new mechanics. These are time blocks. You can, you can drill them out, but they'll come back eventually. Expect to see that a lot in the future. And we're already getting our third gear right here. Like I said, there's an upside and a downside to that. Upside is you get to all the fun parts really quickly, and you get to maximum power very quickly. But unfortunately, there's some really good music here that you don't get to listen to because of that. Because the third gear theme will just override it immediately. By the way, there's nothing down here in these little areas below the blocks. I made that mistake a lot, and... Even though these blocks look different, they might be able to be drilled through. No, there is absolutely nothing. <laughs> Trust me, I've checked. So let's just boost ourselves up to third gear here. And this place does look like a sort of play place, doesn't it? You gotta wonder, was this built just for Jill, or does everybody use this thing? Or did she kind of... Was it just sort of a generic looking place until she added her own personal flair to it? I mean, she is the daughter of the boss. You'd think he'd just let her wander around and do whatever she wants, but... If she painted all of this and built all of this, that's actually pretty impressive for a toddler, you know? Okay, these right here, these are apparently air ducts. That's their official name. And remember, red ones you need to screw right to get through, blue ones you need to screw left to get through. Now, though, I would prefer not to call them by air ducts, okay? I prefer to refer to them by their most inappropriate and juvenile name you could possibly come up for these things, which is screw tubes. Is just let that one sink in for a second. <laughs> and you see the little tutorial guy on top of some of these pipes. I probably should have pointed that out. You can't actually jump on top of these things. They're not, like, untouchable or anything. It's fun to just kind of screw around a little bit. I don't think I can go backwards and show it off, though. Or maybe I can. Yes, I can indeed. We can just go down here and hang out with this guy for a little bit. Everything is... And I screwed myself over. Be right back. Can I... Can I save this? Nope! Oh, leave it to me. I can't even get through one episode without having to make an editing cut. So anyways, yes, here's another new mechanic. These little screw boxes, if you will. You can make them go up, you can make them go down. And remember, kids, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. You... <laughs> that's gonna save your life more than once if you just bash that into your brain. This entire game is centered around the ideas of making screws go in different directions. And if you remember which one works best in which situation more easily, it's going to save you a lot of headaches in the future. Come on, get out of my way. I'm looking at you. There we go. Left to pull out, right to push in. All these cute little drawings all over the place. Again, this place has a very... This entire game just looks great. It's a fantastically produced game. And again, I think I blame... The whole reason this game didn't do well, I think, is because it was made by Game Freak. It's not something people wanted from the company, quote-unquote. Like, it's not something they wanted them to produce, so it got really overlooked, and a lot of people didn't even give it a chance. That's kind of the reason I want to share it with a lot of people, and I want to Let's Play it, because it's a fantastic game, and I don't want to say shame on you guys for not playing it. Oh, look at the little crayon Jill. It's adorable, but what are all the things around the house? Like, I get this thing on the ground right here is supposed to be a flower, but what are all of those? Are those also flowers? Why would flowers be growing near her window, and on her roof, and in the sky? I guess that one's supposed to be in her hand, but oh well. I I'm spending way too much time on this. <laughs> Putting way too much thought into the fact that I'm playing a game where bears are wearing night vision goggles, and I'm questioning the positioning of the, f of the flowers on the wall. Come on, man. <laughs> you gotta learn when not to net pick. Oh, and I love how if you take out the 
Did you catch that just there? Because this is another fantastic little detail. Probably shouldn't have gone through the screen if I wanted to show this. Like, the fish was whole on this block when it was blocking your way, but when you got rid of the obstacle, it turned into the fish bone. It's just so many tiny little things. I love it. You guys should play this game if you haven't gotten the chance. So this right here, this is a jelly block. You drill into it and it won't do anything. What happens is what he... is... Bleh, but well, let me just show it instead of telling. Yes, if you drill in the opposite direction while pummeling into one of these things, you'll be able to launch yourself backwards. And the extension of how far this mechanic can be taken will be shown off in just a little bit. You can actually chain between blocks. So you launch yourself off of one jelly block, and then immediately you grab another one while already in the air, just like I'm doing there, or at least attempting to show off there. And of course, the higher gear you're in, the farther you'll launch. So, there we go. Only by getting up to third gear could I get myself on that platform. And right here is where you'll be seeing it. I... It doesn't really matter which direction you're drilling to start off and which one you choose to uh, counteract it with. It'll both lead you onto, a, onto the opposite platform, but I prefer to sort of go in between or maybe just use one direction instead of switching them. I don't want to confuse myself, if you will. Oh, by the way, this is another new mechanic right here. These are the screw lifts, and you'll notice something. I'm drilling into this thing, but if I hit a wall, I can't, it kind of bounces me back, so you have to flip yourself around in order to get to where you're going. Neat little mechanic right there, and again, this is something they're gonna be playing a with a lot in the future! Oh, send me all the way back down. I see how it is. No respect. No respect. Oh! Just like this game got absolutely no respect. Come on now. I got places to go. People to entertain. At least I hope you're entertained by this. Are you not entertained? That's another quote I tend to use a whole bunch. I try, I'm try. i trying not to abuse things like that, make any catchphrases. I don't know. It's got. I gotta wait for the right moment. You can't force a catchphrase. It's just gotta be a joke that people latch onto naturally. Now these things. This little segment is the only part I don't like about the stage because it is super easy to screw that up. And now, we're at the end. Way to go, boss. Take this as a prize. Come here anytime you want to work on your skills. Ah, oh, cool. They left us a little present to work with. And it's not a treasure, but it is 150 chips. And that's a pretty decent amount, actually, especially early on in the game. Like I said in the first episode, you can never have too many chips in Drill Dozer. You will always need more currency in this game, so <laughs> grab them where you can, I say. There we go, that is area cleared. And like I said, you can go back to that area anytime you want. Yes, I will save that. I'm sure I won't regret overriding my save file anytime in the future. And there we go. That is it for the Red Dozer's training course. So, now that we've got all ourselves all trained up and ready, next time we will be taking on the Skolar Factory and seeing if we can hunt down our mom's red diamond. Until then, I am What the Fnu, and I will see you in the next one. Later, everybody!